Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Arkansas Weather Blog. We are your ticket to big weather events. And uh, I'm going to make this part of the video very short and go straight into the model data. We have so much going on, and I'll give you a quick summary of what you're about to look at with all the model data. First of all, we have not two, but three prop possibilities for precipitation. One tonight and into Thursday morning. That one, again, primarily northern Arkansas. Uh, Sunday... That's primarily northern Arkansas, but maybe even central areas of the state. And then another one, which is way far off towards the end of next week as the Arctic high that's coming in retreats. But the problem and the thing that I'm going to watch for, if this Arctic air is as strong as the models advertise, and that Arctic air is retreating, and that high slips on off towards the east coast, not a favorable position for the high to be in to bring substantial winter weather. However... If there is a lot of cold air, heavy, dense Arctic air in place, it's like trying to, when you get a return flow setting up out of the Gulf of Mexico and the air starts to come off the Gulf, it's like trying to move a brick using a water hose. It's so difficult to dislodge that Arctic air, it takes a long time for it to modify. And if you get precipitation on top of that, you could be looking at more wintry weather. So that was very much iffy at this point in time. By far, the biggest weather story out of all this the biggest, is going to be the cold air. Uh, wind chill readings Thursday morning are going to be in the single digits to teens across the state, but then the bigger push of cold air arrives next week where Little Rock and much of central and northern Arkansas may not get, uh, get above freezing for two, maybe three days straight, and we're talking about some very cold wind chill values. That's the thing I really want to key in on is next week, and the bigger weather story will be the cold air. Okay, enough about me talking. Let's get into the data. This might be information overload, and I'm going to try to keep this as quick as possible, but we'll start off with the GFS, and we'll go into Thursday morning. There's the surface low, frontal boundary trailing right in here. These black lines are isobars, lines of equal barometric pressure. The tighter these are, the air is trying to equalize, and it's flowing out of this high and into the low. Uh, anyway, whenever the air is trying to equalize this way, and you have a rapid pressure rise or decrease, whichever way you want to look at it, um, you're looking at very windy conditions, and I'm talking about wind chill values that are going to be really, really cold tomorrow morning, right? Thursday morning. Uh, but this is nothing compared to what's coming next week. At least that's what the data is telling us. And some of this may change over to a little bit of light snow. You see these gray. Whenever you see on these uh, model projections here on this guidance, the grays and the greens, that's precipitation over the previous six hours, okay? You see this blue dash line? That's typically the rain snow line. Never perfect. Uh, but it's what we call the 540 line. I'm not going to uh, bore you with some details on this one, but we got possibly some snow across northern Arkansas. That moves away, and again, it's northern Arkansas. I wouldn't doubt if some flakes flew this far south either, but at least anything accumulating will be minor and up north. This is noon, and it's, all the precipitation is leaving, and you just see the cold air, again, the clockwise flow out of this height. You can also see the faint gray air arrows, and it's never perfect with the black lines because you get a clockwise flow out of the high you would think oh those are north northeasterly winds no because of the friction of the earth the air going over the, the land here uh the air is coming uh, at a different angle than what you see with those black lines because the frictional for, uh, effects so you're getting a northwesterly wind here that uh, it's cold and it's still howling uh, quite substantially that moves away it's gonna be cold thursday night it's gonna be cold Friday, this is Friday at noon. You can already see, this is a warm-up. See, there's the surface high moving away, and then you get a warm-up on the back side of it. You see all these faint gray arrows, by the way, out here? Southerly surface winds. Yeah, on the back side of the high. Oh, yeah, we're warming. We're going into the 50s. We're going, you know, we're going to get out of the deep freeze. What's this? Uh-huh, here we go. That's an even bigger plunge of Arctic air. This is Saturday at 6 p.m. There it is right here that's the initial wave of arctic air some clouds and maybe some showers along that and the surface high is still well towards the north here this is sunday at midnight you're getting some rain some snow in this area up towards missouri maybe northwest arkansas as a surface wave develops along this boundary and then pushes towards the east now the gfs is not as enthusiastic with the surface wave there it is right there along the boundary and you are getting back into the deep freeze this is noon on sunday again there's a surface low Way up here in the corner of the screen, there's a surface high, and you're getting that air uh, directly coming off of uh, snow fields to the north, coming out of Canada. And that up there, if you look closely, is a 1052 millibar high, extremely heavy, dense Arctic air. I have not seen a 1052 millibar high come down this season. 
Uh, that is some very strong high pressure. This is again, according to the GFS Sunday, it's just getting colder and colder and colder. There's another push of Arctic air coming in. I, this is just incredible. That's Monday morning, 540 line. Uh, there's don't have any precipitation. It looks like some flurries off towards our north, but here's the surface high and you're getting a direct flow of Arctic air coming out of the north. 1052 millibar high at noon on Monday, located right up here across Southern Canada, northeastern uh, Montana. And again, it's just, this is, in a, this is just cold, cold, overwhelming the central and eastern United States. I know some of these maps just look a little, look Greek to you almost, but here's the surface high on Tuesday. I'm going to show you some things that you'll understand a little bit more in just a second, but this is Tuesday at 6 p.m. There's the surface high. And the one thing I wanted to really show you that both, uh, both of the models are doing to a different extent towards the end of next week, there's the cold Arctic high, and then you get a return flow around it, an east-southeasterly flow around it, and moisture starts to come back up. Uh, this is not the ingredients for a big snowstorm uh, whatsoever when you get a retreating Arctic air, uh, or I'm sorry, a retreating Arctic high, but because you still have so much, especially low-level Arctic air, you're going to have to watch towards the end of next week if this precipitation field is correct for it to be snow and ice, especially on the onset. And you can slowly come out of that into plain rain, but there's so much Arctic air in place, this is where you could deal with some icing. Again, way in the long range, we'll see how that pans out. Here's the European interpretation of all that. You see, uh, I'll start this at Thursday morning. Uh, again, uh, there's agreement, the strong push of cold air into uh, Arkansas tomorrow morning, Thursday morning, surface wave, the rain changing to snow across the north. That pulls away. There's the warm up, just like the GFS. There's the warm up. The, that high that comes in Thursday slips on off towards the east. You get that return flow around it. It southerly winds. There's the new Arctic high. The GFS and the European are both on board with this. Sunday morning, there's the Arctic front. Whoops, there's the Arctic front right in here. And a more substantial wave of low pressure compared to the GFS by late in the day Sunday up here in the Ohio River Valley. And some of this is rain changing to some snow, especially for northern Arkansas. And again, a 1052 millibar high coming out of Canada. You see that cold air just draining right into uh, the central and eastern United States. All right, now, weatherbell.com. I know this is off just a little bit. Maybe I can move this. Yeah, let me move that over just a little bit. Snowfall amounts tonight and tomorrow morning. There you go. This is according to the European Everything generally under one inch, northern, north central, northeast Arkansas. I wouldn't doubt if flakes flew as far south as central Arkansas, but that's not the cold is the bigger story. Okay, how about the European going into the Sunday, uh, Monday event? Well, it doesn't have anything in central Arkansas, but it's getting trace amounts in west central and a little bit more across northern Arkansas. So that's the target area. And again, the, the, any type of snow out of this, like this can change, does not look to be heavy. You're looking at mostly uh, one inch or less, maybe up to close to two inches across northern Arkansas, combined out of both systems Thursday and late in the weekend in the beginning of next week. But look what the, uh, watch this. You see how it grows those snow fields? It's with that precipitation coming into the area as that Arctic high leaves. And it's showing some accumulations late next week. Again, long range, we'll see if this holds true. But late next week, across much of the northwest, uh, yeah, northwestern half of the state. I know I'm going fast, but it's just so much data to show you. Um, let me go here. This is the GFS. I'll stop this right. This is Sunday morning. There's the surface low. The blue is the snow. The purple is, uh, looks like that's freezing rain and maybe some sleet in there too. But as that cold air comes in, there's the surface low and the cold air starts draining in you see the precipitation start to change to snow Sunday across this area of the state. That red line is the 32 degree line. The blue line is the 35 degree line. And that moves away. And it's just, whoops, there's that uh, area of high pressure. I don't know why it's doing that. And as that area of high pressure right here starts to retreat and you get a return flow, moisture wants to get drawn up on the back side of this. And you see some of that right in here. Uh, and the 32 degree line is still way south because there's so much Arctic air. So you're getting clouds, you could get drizzle, you could have, uh, again, just depending on how much moisture is re uh, uh, gets drawn up in the return flow, that's something to watch towards the end of next week. This stuff is really amazing. Here's wind chill values according to the GFS. 
Let's get to next week with the Arctic air in place. That's uh, Monday at noon, wind chill values in the teens. Look at all the well below zero wind chill values up towards the north. That's 15, 20 degrees below zero up here in the white and the green. Let's see here. There's Tuesday morning. I don't know if this is going to verify, folks. This seems a little too extreme, but this is Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. Look at these wind chill values. Seven degrees below zero in central Arkansas, one degree below zero all the way to Monticello, 13, 14, 15 degrees below zero across northern Arkansas. It's a little too extreme. Is it possible? I guess it is since the model is showing it. And look at this. Wednesday morning, again, windshield values below zero across much of the state. So you're looking at the possibility next week for windshield advisories that could be issued. <sighs> okay, I'm done. Thank you so much for coming here to the Arkansas Weather Blog. So much to look at over the next several days. But thank you so much for coming to the Arkansas Weather Blog. Happy New Year. We are your ticket to big weather events.